The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Better Manage Customer Credit Risk and Reduce Outstanding Debts by Patrick Coughlin from Creditor Watch. Before we get started, I'll go over a few things so you know how to participate in today's event. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join in over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You'll have the opportunity to submit questions to Patrick by typing them into the questions pane on the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time. We'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end. If we don't have time to answer all the questions, we'll record them and Patrick will answer them in writing after the webinar and we'll send you a copy of the answers. To give a brief introduction on today's presenter, Patrick is the Commercial Director at Creditor Watch and was one of the two founding employees. He's responsible for sales, marketing and overall company strategy, including product development. I'll now hand over to Patrick. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to uh, this presentation. I appreciate the opportunity. Hello, everyone. I hope you can uh, all hear me properly. Um, as the intro said, I've, I've been at Creditor Watch from the beginning, um, so I've got a, a very good and I should have a very good knowledge of you know, all the products that we have. Um, and today we're going to look at our core product, which is ultimately what we call Creditor Watch, um, and that really is a credit management tool. So let's have a look at what we'll cover today. The first thing is uh, a little bit about Creditor Watch. Now, I know that uh, we've been involved with APA for a, a couple of years now, so a few of you might be customers, um, a few of you may have heard of us and, and some may have no idea who Creditor Watch is, so that's fine. This, uh, this webinar will look after all of you in, that, in those sort of three categories. So a little bit about Creditor Watch first. We'll have a look at some market insights, what we're noticing out there, um, not necessarily in the economy, but more so from the data that is coming into Creditor Watch. Um, we'll then look at a fairly basic credit management process and how, how it should be set up, and this is what you should be doing sort of day to day and, and, and dealing with you know, individual debtors or customers. We'll then get into a bit of a demonstration of Creditor Watch and, and ultimately how it can help your business, looking at essentially what to look for in a credit report when you're bringing on a new customer, look at the monitoring and e-alerts and how they work. So that's really keeping an eye on all of your current customers and responding to changes as they occur. And the third one, um, of our sort of core, core products there is debt collection tools. So Creditor Watch won't do the debt collection itself. Um, however, we give you a number of tools that you can add, uh, sorry, that you can use, which should cover off um, you know, the majority of issues that you'll see along the way. And then from time to time, obviously, if you need to re uh, refer it to a, a debt collector or a mercantile agent, we can help you with that. We get a quick recap of the features and benefits of Creditor Watch, um, and I'll and I'll touch on very quickly um, a product we have called Apply Easy, which is ultimately an online credit application, and how that works and how it can sort of tie in everything we speak about today and actually automate it for you. And then, um, as mentioned, we'll get into a, a Q and A session. So please do ask questions along the way, and uh, that way, when we get to the end, I've I've got some that I can start um, addressing. So let's have a look a little bit about Creditor Watch. <clears throat> so we're Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau. We're fully online, so everything you can access is online via a web, a web portal, and we've got over 40,000 customers. So ultimately, the best way to probably describe us to someone who hasn't used a credit reporting bureau before is ultimately a virtual accounts receivable manager. So we will help you or assist you in um, taking care of all the credit management processes within your business, from credit reporting, monitoring, and debt collection tools. There's a few other things along the way that I'll, I'll touch on as well when we do the demo. So why have we been able to get to 40,000 customers? Well, ultimately, it's a really easy to use platform, and we provide that core suite of uh, credit management tools. It's extremely affordable. So we've got customers from you know sole traders. I'm sure there's some sole traders uh, listening in, who might be operating out of you know their, their garage or their second bedroom, all the way up to public companies, uh, you know ASX listed companies. So it's really a, a flexible tool that that any sort of business can use. 
We pull in multiple sources of data, so that's ultimately coming from ASIC, Australian Business Register, courts, um, our 40,000 customers, we've got debt collectors that provide us information. We integrate with Xero and MYB as well, which uh, assists with both data collection but also with information. So let's look at some market trends as well. Um, so what are we seeing out there? We've noticed that in the past 12 months, the average default that is registered with, with Creditor Watch, now a default is um, essentially a black mark that a Creditor Watch member can register against one of their customers. So if that customer owes the money and it's uh, more than 60 days overdue, they can register a default against them and that puts a, a black mark essentially on their credit file that will stay on their credit file for up to five years and it will be seen by anyone that accesses a credit report on that company or if they're monitoring that company within Creditor Watch, they'll receive an email alert saying a default has been registered. So we've seen the value of these defaults in the last 12 months rise from about $4,500 to just over $7,000. So it's a, it's a big jump. Obviously there's been plenty of big failures out there of late and that has a, a real domino effect down to small businesses. The days to default has also reduced over the past 12 months. So look, what that means is our customers, they're not waiting you know, 90 plus days to register a default against one of their debtors that's outstanding. They're registering it more at that you know, 60 to 70 days overdue. The big stat that we've seen um, we've got some boffins in the, in the background to obviously have a look at all the data that we've got and, uh, and assess it. In the last 18 months, we've seen that if a default is registered against an entity, so against a, a customer, um, that entity has a 46% chance of failing. So ultimately what we're telling our, our members is if you see a default get registered against one of your customers, you really, really should start to strongly consider whether you want to continue to do business with that customer because we're saying that there's a 46% chance that they will fail and in this case we're, just, we're, we're uh, talking about failure as deregistration, administration or strike off action. And there's obviously additional sort of alerts between a default and those um, you know, failure statuses. So ultimately what do we need to do? We need to be extremely vigilant and we need to look out for these key insolvency indicators and, and that comes not from not just from using Creditor Watch, um, but also from you know making sure that you're in touch with your your debtors, your customers, um, talking to other people in the industry at you know APRA events for in, uh, for instance, or if you're you're part of a bureau, a trade bureau of any description, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Are there payment terms or are there payment days you know changing? Are they are they usually sort of paying you on time, but they're slowly you know blowing out, they're really good indicators that they're starting to struggle um, and also you know, the, the clear ones where you can't get a hold of them. You, know, you, you really want to be, be looking to get as much information from you know, all parts of the market, supply, other suppliers, even other customers um, and uh, you know, keeping an eye on people as close as possible at the moment. So I've put, I've put here a, a fairly, as I say, basic credit management process. Um, it, it looks very simple and, and that's because it is, but it really does work. You know, simplicity can really work for you. So this is not just um, a credit management process that you would use uh, on its own. It's obviously talking about how you would use Creditor Watch as part of this credit management process. So a new customer comes to you. The first thing you should be doing is running a credit report on them. You know, who are they exactly? Um, are they registered? Um, what's their status? Do they have any you know, negative information on their, on their credit report? And we'll look at a credit report a little bit, little bit later, but this is the first thing you should be doing. Because if it all, if it all goes pear-shaped, you need to know who you're dealing with and you need to be able to uh, potentially you know, take them to court or pass them on to a, to a debt collector. So credit report's the first thing that you should be doing. If they've got a clean credit report, you're going to go, great, I'm going to do business with you and I'm going to monitor on Creditor Watch. So you can do that. You don't have to tell the customer that you're, uh, you're going to monitor them, but it's really easy to set up, click of a button, and you'll monitor them. And what that means is if any changes occur to that particular customer, we'll send you an email alert telling you what that change is. You know, regardless of whether you've got five customers or 5,000 customers, it's very difficult to know exactly what is going 
going on out there, um, particularly with you know the likes of the courts, defaults, um, ASIC, Australian Business Register. There's there's constantly changes occurring, and it's our job at Creditor Watch to send those alerts to you, saying, hey, these guys have just had a court judgment against them for fifty thousand dollars. Obviously, when you uh, send the product or the service, you want to invoice them straight away. You want to have all uh, the debtor or the customer's information on that particular invoice and get it out as soon as possible. Waiting till the end of the month just means that you're, you know, you're waiting extra days to actually get paid. You then want to diarise um, and, and set in stone when you send out statements. It might be you know, the day that it's, the invoices are due, it might be seven days after it's due, but you want to really train your debtor and train yourself to send these constant reminders at the same time. And what you'll find is the debtor gets trained and starts to pay you on time or at least quicker than they typically did in the past. Moving down onto this bottom line, this is more, um, not drastic action, this next one, the invoice reminder, but you may not be able to get a hold of them or you know they're telling you, yeah, payment's coming, payment's coming and it never does come. You're not overly worried, but there's a bit of concern there. So an invoice reminder will provide a template for you as part of your Creditor Watch membership and it will just outline, you know, this is a little bit more serious now, we need payment, um, et cetera, et cetera. Having that third party endorsement from a company like Creditor Watch gets the debtor to take notice and ultimately helps encourage them um, to settle their outstanding bills. The next one is a letter of demand and that's a little bit more, I say, aggressive or forceful. You're past you know, the niceties of emails and, and phone calls. It's now, you've got X amount of days, usually we say end of the week or seven, seven business days, for instance. Um, and if that doesn't occur, it outlines the steps that you're going to take, which includes you know, um, debt collection process, taking them to court, winding them up, etc. The next one is if they still haven't paid, you want to register a default against them. <clears throat> okay, that's a really powerful piece of, um, a really powerful collection tool because it does put a black mark against them and people are very aware of their credit, rep uh, their credit reports and their credit ratings and this will affect it. So it's a powerful collection tool that you should be using. And obviously the final one there is legal action and typically it's very rare that you would need to do that hopefully. Um, and you know, unfortunately, there are people out there who know how to <coughs> play the system, and there are people out there who simply, you know, run out of money and have to go out of business. But it's uh, it's one of those um, risks of doing business, particularly on credit, um, and and obviously you want to follow that process. So a live demonstration coming up next. I'm going to take you through. Um, what it's like to have a Credit Watch account and how it will help your business, uh, you know, reduce bad debts, improve cash flow, avoid avoid you know dodgy businesses, that sort of thing. So we'll we'll take you through the dashboard, um, how to run a credit re report and what to look for, how the monitoring and alerts work. We'll take a quick look at the debt collection tools that I obviously just mentioned in that uh, credit management process, and also we've got a bonus feature as well that I'll touch on, which is the high risk list. You can see there I've got a link set up, so it's actually a, um, a promo code for APA members and, and obviously webinar attendees and it gets you access to a free trial that we're running at the moment. I'll come back to that at the end there, so don't, uh, don't worry about sort of scribbling it down right now. So let's jump into Creditor Watch. Okay, hopefully you can all see Creditor Watch properly. So I've logged into my, call it a fake account. And the first thing it takes me to is my dashboard. This is really your home page within Creditor Watch and it gives you access to all the actions you can take, all of your data, your customers, um, you know, good and bad customers. So you can see these action tiles allow you to perform a bunch of uh, actions. Perform a credit check, um, add entities to your watch list. So you can do bulk upload, you can upload multiple customers into your Creditor Watch account at once or you can do it one at a time. Register defaults if you ever need to. High risk list, I'll come back to at the end. Um, but you've got your membership logo here that you can download. Um, Credit Watch membership logo, download, put it on your invoices and statements, letter of demand, and just uh, verify my account when you first sign up. A few other things that we've got here is statistics. So we can see that I'm only using 35% of my watch list. So 
typically you get a certain limit um, and it will tell you how close you are to that limit. And if you go over that limit, it's all right, it just rolls you onto the next plan and we make you aware of that. Adverse, now this is uh, attached to the high risk list as well. So I can see that 24% um, of entities that I'm monitoring, so 24% of my customers actually have adverse against them, which is negative data. So it's a really important indicator there and it gives me a good, a good idea of who I shouldn't be doing business with or maybe people that I need to move on to COD for instance. Here we've also got a refer a friend. So if you're enjoying Credit or Watch, you can refer it on to others. This, uh, this section here changes from time to time depending on you know, whether we've got new features or products that we're, uh, we've just released. At the bottom here, we'll also see all the recent alerts that have come through. So what you'll find is you receive email alerts uh, for changes that occur to the customers that you're monitoring, but we'll also provide alerts through the dashboard as well in case your emails go down or someone else needs to access them. Jumping up to the top, you'll see my watch list. So what this is, is a list of all the companies that I'm monitoring, okay? Pretty straightforward. So all you would do is, I wanna have a look at you know, any of these, you would just click on it and it would take you through to that particular credit report, really simple. And credit reports are included in your, your monthly credit watch subscription. Um, your monthly fee is based on how many customers you're monitoring and then you can run credit reports on top of that as part of that monthly subscription. The high risk list, so let's have a little bit of a closer look at this. What this is doing is flagging all the customers that you, you're uh, currently monitoring within your Creditor Watch account that have some form of adverse or negative data against it. So when I say adverse or negative data, I can mean anything including payment defaults registered by Creditor Watch customers, court judgments, court actions that have taken place, um, insolvency notices, administrations, liquidations, winding up notices, um, any sort of ASIC documents that indicate that there's something negative has happened to that particular company. So this is a really, really good list to work through when you first start using Creditor Watch, for instance, because what it's going to do is it's going to tell you those companies that you're currently doing business with that you probably shouldn't be doing business with. So you can see that there's plenty of them here and you will just work through that initially. Some of them you might be aware of. Um, they might have cancelled ABN, so it indicates they've sold their business to someone else um, or that they've uh, you know, got a deregistered ACN, for instance, because the company's closed down. So it's a really important um, bit of uh, data to take in and what we actually do when we first bring you on board as a Creditor Watch customer is we'll help you upload your customer list securely into your account. Everything's obviously confidential and only you can see it and then we'll provide this high risk to you as a, sort of, um, you know, a welcome bonus. Thank you for, for joining Creditor Watch and you really do get a lot of um, uh, information out of this particular feature. Recent lookups are just companies that I've looked up in the past, and defaults. Defaults are just a list of defaults that I've registered against other customers. So it's nice and easy for you to come back to. So let's perform a credit check and get stuck into that. So I'll use one that I've used in the past, Denim Constructions. So it's as simple as searching by business name, ABN or ACN. By using the business name, it then comes up with a list of search results, much like Google, and I'm gonna go, okay, Denim Constructions, I know they're in New South Wales. So click on there and it takes us through to the Creditor Watch report. So this is live on the portal. So if there's any changes um, and you came back you know, 15 minutes later, that would have been updated for you. So this first top section is really giving you a better understand, a, a good understanding of what sort of um, shape are these guys in. So we can see credit score one. That's terrible because score can be between zero and 850 and zero is the worst. 106 credit inquiries over the last 12 months, unless they're a, you know, an enormous business, anything over sort of uh, you know, 20 or 30 inquiries indicates there's a lot of people looking at them. Company status, they're under external administration. Um, so again, not a good sign. Seven payment defaults, 14 court judgments, and one insolvency notice. And you can see big red here is flagging a few other things, including mercantile inquiries. So that's a debt collection notice uh, and also high-risk ASIC documents. 
So straight away, you know that these guys are bad news and you really shouldn't be doing business with them. But for the purpose of this presentation, I'm obviously going to scroll down a little bit further and have a look at the other bits of information that are provided on the credit report. So this business summary will show uh, the publicly available Australian Business Register data, which is the ABN Lookup website. So we actually pull that information straight into Creditor Watch, so you, you wouldn't need to go to the ABN Lookup website. And obviously the ASIC information. So we can see under external administration, we can see the registration dates, which are always important. So these guys have been around for a long time, but unfortunately have uh, you know since fallen over. And we can see that they are effective for GST. The next one down is the credit score. So in this case, it's on a scale of 0 to 850, with 850 being the best score you can have. We'll provide an average of that entity type. So in this case, we're looking at a company, but if we were looking at a partnership, sole trader, um, or trust, we'd, we'd, we'd have a, a different sort of average, and typically it's a little bit lower. We also provide a 12-month historical trend. So you can see that this company, Denim Constructions, has been um, trending downwards for quite some time. So it's probably about 18 months ago that they started to really get, in, get themselves into a bit of strife. We'll also provide uh, some recommendations depending on what their score is just to help you along the way to determine how you should be doing business with them. We have a payment predictor. Now a payment predictor will show you on average how many days overdue this particular company pays their bills and we get that data from companies that submit their, their age trial balance or their age receivables. You know, current 1 to 30, 30, 60, 60, 90, 90 plus, etc. And also from uh, linking your account with Zero and MYV. We pull all that information together and give you uh, an average days overdue that this company pays. We obviously don't have it for companies that are in administration because you know that they're in trouble. There's no point in wasting, um, wasting having a look at that particular stat. But I will show you another one just quickly. Where have I got one? Here we go. Born Constructions, just to give you a better idea of what the payment predictor looks like. So you can see average days overdue that they're paying is two, uh, but they have been a bit up and down over the last um, 12 months. They seem to be trending in a much better direction for the last sort of three or four months there. So a few bit of statistics that we'll provide, you know, average balance, average overdue, um, the highest credit exposure. So you can see that actually with a single supplier had over $400,000 uh, due to a single supplier. We can see number of trade lines as well. So that's the number of companies submitting um, receivable information. You don't have to submit receivable information to access a payment predictor. Um, so that's fine, just keep that in mind. The next bit of information we'll look at is risk data. So court judgments. We can see there's 14 of them and we'll have a look at these in a little bit more detail. So the information that comes in on the court uh, judgments are obviously when it took place, where it took place, who the plaintiff was. So you can see there's a number of different ones here. Um, and the other important information obviously is the judgment amount itself. So you know, 4,000, 3,000, then you've got some big, big ones like $60, $67,000 there. And you can see that there's plenty of them across a wide, a wide variety of customers. Um, and they, the first one we can see came in 2013, and they were all right for you know about 18 months, but then they came in sort of thick and fast, um, starting in uh, you know early last year, early 2015. We look at payment defaults. Now these are obviously unique to Creditor Watch. They've been uh, registered by our Creditor Watch members. You can see when they were added, the date of the initial invoice when it was due. So sometimes it takes people a little while to actually register them. Who was submitted by? So essentially, you know, who the creditor is, who the supplier is, the amount, and also the status. So the status will say current. So obviously, it's still outstanding. Has been part paid, which means uh, typically the, the debtor has paid part of it, um, and it, it could be a dispute, but more likely they've got them on a payment plan or it could say settled as well. I don't have any settled examples there, but that means there was a default, it was overdue, but the, uh, the debtor, the customer has since paid that bill. The next one we have here is insolvency notices. So this is gonna give you um, a really good understanding of um, 
what happens when a company either has a winding up order. So in this case, you can see that they've been wound up, and you can actually see who the who the who, who's running that, that wind up. So in this case, it's being seen in the Supreme Court. You've got a date there, so it was very recent, and who the plaintiffs. Um, uh, representatives are, so in this case, uh, Colin Biggers and Paisley. So you, you can actually get in contact with them if you needed to, to find out more information. If they were in administration, we provide the administrator's details along with uh, uh, minutes of the meetings that take place, when the meetings are taking place, and also conference, uh, teleconference facilities. If you couldn't make it to the meeting, then you could dial in. So keep in mind that every little bit of information that I'm showing here along the way, is actually going to be provided to you in the form of email alerts if you are monitoring this particular company. Mercantile footprints. So mercantile footprints are registered by debt collection agencies when they're tasked with collecting an outstanding debt on, on a particular customer. So on this particular customer debtor, obviously, they've had a couple there. I'll move along a little bit so we don't get too bogged down. The next most important thing is obviously who are the directors. So by doing a search, you can confirm who the directors are. This is really important because you want to make sure that the person who's applying for credit actually is uh, the owner or the director of the company that they're applying for credit as. So this will give you not only who they are, but when they were born and obviously their addresses as well. So you can go through your checks and balances to make sure that they are who they say they are. The other thing we'll provide is cross-directorships. So this is really important to make sure that, okay, well, imagine Denim Constructions was in good shape, but then you come down here and you can see a number of other companies that aren't doing so well, that are either under external administration as well. You can see there, we just jumped over, sorry. Sorry guys, I accidentally clicked the button there. Um, we can see that they're under external administration or it'll flag you know, court judgments, payment defaults and that sort of thing that may have uh, taken place to other companies that they're involved with. And then the last two here are company addresses. Where are they based? Um, so you can confirm you know, what's on the credit application form. You can either jump in and have a look at to see is it a big factory that they have or is, is it a small op or is it in suburb somewhere? So a little bit more information. And the last one we have here is share capital. So find out who the, obviously the shareholders are. Look, if you, if you thought these guys were good and you wanted to do business with them, all you would do is go, okay, monitor for changes. By clicking that monitor for changes button, it adds it to your watch list and going forward, you're gonna receive alerts on them if they were a new customer. If they were already a customer of yours, it would obviously say, on watch list there. So that's the credit report with credit or watch. The next thing I'll give you a demonstration of is the risk alerts that come through via email. So what you can see here is a risk alert has come through and it will tell you all the changes that have taken place to customers that you're monitoring. So this is really important. There's only so much you can do to keep an eye on all your customers um, Credit Watch being you know, an automated tool will actually do a lot more for you and cover a lot of customers and cover multiple uh, sources of, of data and changes. So you can see that Queensland Demolition have had an ASIC insolvency notice lodged against it. It's as simple as clicking on the link and it takes you straight through to the ASIC insolvency notice itself so you can see application for winding up. The other ones there, you'll see that there's been ASIC documents lodged, so in this case, a uh, copy of minutes or meetings. So click on that and it takes you through to the credit file as well. Let's see if there's another insolvency notice that we can have a look at. There we go. Notice of meeting of creditors. So you can see who the administrator is, when's the meeting taking place, what the agenda is, proof of debt and proxies and when they're due. So you're really getting a lot of information there. So that's how the um, email alerts were really simple. They come through once every day with a summary of all the changes that have taken place. Jumping back to the dashboard, let's have a look at the debt collection tools that are on offer. So the main ones that I touched on earlier, obviously, the Creditor Watch membership logo. So you can download that 
You can put that on your invoices, your statements. Um, some people put it on their email signatures and even their website. So basically anywhere that your customers are looking, particularly from a payment request point of view, it will encourage them to pay their, uh, their bills sooner. And, and we've done some sort of studies into that which show that you, know, you can get paid up to seven days faster than those not using the membership logo. So it's a really powerful piece of uh, uh, collection tool. Dealing with debtors, it's a really straightforward um, little download. If you wanted this after the webinar, please just get in contact with us. It just takes you through the steps that you should be taking in order to uh, you know, ensure that you're collecting your debts as quickly as possible. And then we've got the two reminder notices. So the first reminder notice and obviously the final notice template. I'll give you a look at that so you can get a better understanding of what I was talking about earlier. So you can see all the red is what you have to fill in. So you're putting your company logo in and you know, the relevant dates and customer information. But that third party endorsement with the Creditor Watch membership logo and then also having this written here. So failure to comply will result in this account being listed with our credit reporting agency. So it really tells them what will happen if they don't pay their bill. And the majority of the time, people will get in contact with you to either organize a payment plan um, or to pay the bill as quickly as possible. And we use it in our business um, all the time. I used to work in a publishing company and, and we've since uh, you know, signed that publishing company up and they use it in their business. And it's amazing how powerful a tool this uh, final demand template is and also, and also the membership logo. So all of this, as I mentioned, um, you know, makes up that credit management process. So you want to be sticking to that process, ensuring that you, you run your checks, you monitor your customers, and you stay right on top of uh, your debt collection. You don't want to just be collecting debts when it gets 90 days overdue. The longer you leave a debt to be collected, the harder it is to actually collect that debt. You, know, you really want to have everything sort of sitting in your current or your one to 30 columns within your accounting software. That's the most important places for it to be. And even the less, the less you can have in that one to 30, the better off you are. There's a lot of working capital that small businesses lose because it's sitting in that receivables. And ultimately, your customers are using you as a bank. So you want to be, um, as I guess, as aggressive and forceful as you can without putting your customers off. Uh, but obviously, once they start to get to a certain point where they're avoiding you or they're you know, typically late, 90 days overdue all the time, it's time to start thinking about whether you really want to be doing business with, uh, with customers like that. So just jumping back to the presentation itself. So recapping, obviously, I went into quite a bit of detail there, credit reports, customer monitoring and alerts, and the debt collection tools. Some of the benefits, obviously, reduce bad debt, improve your cash flow. So the two you know, main things that probably affect small businesses nowadays. You can respond to changing customer circumstances. So if you know a customer is in a bit of uh, you know financial strife or something's coming up like a you know a court a court date or an administration or winding up, you know you can respond to it as quickly as possible rather than waiting, continuing to supply them with you know goods or services, and you know that bad debt continues to increase month on month. If you can nip it in the bud, you know one month in rather than waiting three months, so you're saving yourself a significant amount of money. Also, the alerts will help you prioritise which customers you should be ultimately collecting from first and foremost. The one other thing I wanted to touch on is um, an online credit application. So there's, I guess in today's world, technology has become uh, a lot more easier to access, a lot more efficient, flexible and obviously affordable. So something to keep in mind is you know, having an online credit application. And ultimately what that means is you get to do away with using a paper-based application form, which is a little bit finicky. Customers often, you know, leave out the important details. Um, they've got, you know, put a big red line through director's guarantees and whatnot. Um, or their handwriting, you know, is really illegible. And you end up having to go backwards and forwards with the customer. It takes a long time. Um, it's not overly professional. You know, if you can have something, a nice clean, you know, online credit application that allows them to apply for an account with you online, it looks a lot better and it, you know, it really does improve your customer service. So we've got another 
product that I won't touch on too much other than to say, you know, it's an online, uh, an online credit application. We ultimately replicate your paper-based credit application form. We brand it with your logo, color scheme, um, you know, give you a, a, a URL such as, um, you know, Brickworks is a customer of mine, brickworks.applyeasy.com.au. So for the customer's point of view, it looks like they're applying for an account with you. Everything's fully uh, customized and obviously we automate a number of the credit management processes like the credit reporting, uh, the monitoring and alerts, and obviously as well that I've got written here is trade references. So we've got a video tutorial there that I've put on there that you might want to have a look at later on. Um, I know these slides are being passed on to you uh, within the next sort of 24 or 48 hours and there's the website link as well that you can jump onto. So I'm aware of the time that we've got, so thanks very much for attending. Um, we'll get into some Q&As now. Obviously, I just want to let you know that there is a, a free 15-day trial for all APA members, uh, you know, their associates, customers, anyone who's listening in today. Use that link that we've got here, creditorwatch.com.au forward slash promo code and APA that you can see there. We'll share that afterwards. If you've got any questions, um, give us a call, 0281882025. Um, or email us at sales underscore admins at creditorwatch.com.au. So let's get to the questions. I'll see if I can work this properly. Bear with me for one second and I'll just have a look. Questions. Okay. Not a lot there, but I'll uh, go through a couple. Um, so the free trial itself, you actually get access to um, all the same features I've just demonstrated um, as if you were a paying customer. So you don't have to worry about sort of missing out on anything. Um, the other thing is you can cancel it at any time. There's no locking contracts or anything like that. The email alerts come through on a daily basis, as I mentioned earlier. So at 12 o'clock, um, if any changes had occurred, we would send out that email alert and it will have all the changes that have occurred. And that looks like it's about it. If, I, um, if you do have any other questions, please get in contact with APA or, or with Creditor Watch. Um, you can ask, you can call up, you can ask for me. My name's obviously Patrick. But if that's it for the day, I think I will say thanks again for attending um, and I hope that you, you know, found this beneficial. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Patrick. That was fantastic. Lots of great information there. Um, there are a couple of more questions coming through, so we'll get Patrick to, um, to answer those um, afterwards. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and have a great afternoon.